defensive line show. They had great defense. They won on defense, special teams, offense, coaching. They won in every aspect of that game. Urban Meyer. Oh, this little blue stripe right there. And I always like the relics with the nice blue, with the nice stripe down them. Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to be breaking down the 2019 NCAA March Madness Tournament Bracket. It's finally here, the time of the year that everybody loves so much. It's my favorite time of the year. March Madness, along with opening day for baseball. It's kind of the best time of the year, but this time we're going to go over the March Madness Bracket for 2019. Some intriguing matchups and upsets galore, prob most likely, as it is almost every tournament. A lot of upset picks. That can be picked by a lot of people. A lot of intriguing matchups. I think that this year, more that more of the intriguing matchup picks. A lot of intriguing matchups, especially in the first round that we can go over this year. So it's definitely going to be a little bit tougher to pick your bracket this year. Was for me just a little bit tougher. Uh, so we're gonna get, but we're gonna get right into these picks. So let's gonna so we're gonna start uh, not these picks this breakdown. I'm not gonna give away most of my picks here. I'm gonna do that in a separate video coming up very soon, most likely tomorrow on Monday. Gonna give my entire bracket predictions region by region. Each region gets their own video, but that's how it's gonna go. But let's get right into this top left hand corner. Your East region for the bracket. You've got the Duke Blue Devils as the no top overall seed in the tournament. And the two seed, Michigan State, I was kind of shocked to see them there. I thought that, I personally thought that Michigan State deserved to be a one seed over the North Carolina Tar Heels, but uh, I'm not in that bracket room. I don't know how they discuss things. So I just personally thought with the eye test and a couple of the rankings and things like that, I thought that Michigan State deserved a one seed over North Carolina, but that's not what happened. Clearly, there's some intriguing matchups here. I think a 5-12 matchup in this region that's not going to be talked about a lot that should be put under a microscope, most certainly, is Mississippi State and Liberty. Liberty winning the Atlantic Sun, which is one of the lower con lower paid attention to conferences. They beat Lips come to get there, but Liberty, a 12 on the 12 line, I definitely think they're one of the more underrated teams in this tournament. And Mississippi State, one of the more overrated teams, in my opinion. I think that they should have switched with Maryland and gone to the 6 line. Maryland and, uh, from the 6 line to the, fa to the 5 line, but Mississippi State, towards the end of the season, they have not played very well, they have been, they have not played to the potential that they could be playing at, um, early exit in the SEC tournament, so I definitely do believe that there is a possible upset right there in Liberty, Mississippi State that not a lot, not a lot of people are picking, and then you have Maryland versus the winner of the playing game between Temple and Belmont, I was a little bit shocked to see Belmont in the tournament, but I really liked that decision by the committee to put Belmont into the tournament. I think that that was the best decision they made this entire bracket to give Belmont a chance out of the OVC. I think they deserved a chance, most certainly. And they, I believe that they'll win their first ground game against Temple. I'm going to give that right now. And I do believe that they have a shot to make it as far as the Sweet 16 in the tournament. Belmont is going to be one of the Cinderella upset picks. And they're going to prove that they belonged. And they're going to prove the committee right by giving them a chance. Also, LSU-Yale. Really looking at an upset pick in that matchup. Yale coming out of the Ivy League, and we know the Ivy League has not disappointed going to the tournament. 2013, 14-seeded Harvard wins their first round game. 2014, 13-seeded Harvard wins their first round game. 2016, Yale as a 12-seed wins their first ever tournament game. So recent years, Ivy League has not disappointed in the tournament. Though the last two years, Princeton and Pennsylvania have lost... Princeton was a tight game, losing to Notre Dame, but Ivy League doesn't disappoint in the tournament, and they got a good draw facing a three-seeded LSU team who was an early exit in the SEC tournament, not winning a single game, getting knocked out early by Florida, and not having Will Wade on the floor has really hurt LSU, and that's definitely why I think that this could be an upset pick right there that some people could pick. Next, we're going to move on to the south region at the top right-hand corner. Virginia, they're the one seed over there. I do think that they deserved a one seed. Tennessee on the two lines. So the top two seeds were there, uh, right there where, there where I believe they should be. Wisconsin and Oregon. Oregon, a bid thief, and I think that they might be able to prove why facing a Wisconsin team who isn't one, playing 100% for sure right now. 
I think the Wisconsin can be prone to an upset here. Oregon can definitely is definitely the team to pull it off. One by ten. One by excuse me, not ten. Twenty in their conference championship game over Washington to sneak into the tournament and be a bid stealer. Taking the bid away from, in my opinion, NC State. So Oregon definitely a team that can make some noise right there facing Wisconsin. And then right below it, Kansas State and UC Irvine. Kansas State not going to be able to have Dean Wade most likely for the tournament. Didn't have him for the Big 12 tournament and definitely hurt them. They lost to Iowa State who ended up winning the Big 12 title. Kansas State not having Dean Wade. I'm really going to hurt him. I really like the Anteaters out of UC Irvine. I think that that right there can be a couple of big upsets and a surprise Sweet 16 team is going to pro- is going to most likely come out of those two games in the South region. Another game right below those two, Villanova St. Mary. St. Mary is going to be a popular upset pick because of their win over Gonzaga, but Villanova is just such a good tournament team, defending national champions. They're clicking at the right time. I really, I can see that being an upset. But Villanova is a tournament team. They prove that they belong when it matters. So that's my opinion on that matchup. And I think that a surprise team that can make some some noise personally is Purdue, really by Carson Edwards. They have made some. Sh- they have shocked a lot of people this year. I think that they can shock some people in the tournament. Let's go to the bottom right hand corner. We're going to go to the Midwest region in led by North Carolina, who I personally believe should have been on that two line. I said that already, but they're on the one line. And then the two-seeded Kentucky, so North Carolina-Kentucky. That could possibly set up a Sweet 16 matchup right there. Utah State facing Washington. That could be one of the most intri- – that could has to be the most intriguing 8-9 matchup in my opinion. Got Auburn facing New Mexico State, which that's going to be another 12-5. A popular upset pick, but I think that Auburn has played too well in recent games to – go down that easily, winning the SEC title handedly over the Tennessee Volunteers, taking them out of a possibility for the one line. So Auburn, they're clicking at the right time. And if they were to move on, they're most likely going to face Kansas. Kansas facing Northeastern. And I think Northeastern, they're a team who is is inconsistent at the free throw line. They can make their free throws. They can miss them. Saw that in the CAA title game. They were just able to make some clutch shots, able to come up with some defensive play plays and to shut down Hofstra's outside shooting to win that CAA title game. So I think that that could be a possible upset, but Northeastern's good. it's going to take everything they have to beat Kansas because Kansas, even though they haven't had the best of years, they're still one of the elite programs. I think that right it, as you look towards the bottom of the bottom right-hand corner, Watford, Seton Hall, in my opinion, that is going to be the best first round matchup of the entire tournament. Wofford, a team that has proved themselves all year, come up with a couple of big upsets. Seton Hall, a team that's clicking at the right time. Both these teams have been pretty consistent throughout the entire year. I think Seton Hall's more inconsistent just because they had a lot better wins towards the end of the season. A couple wins over Marquette and just missing out on the Big East title. So Seton Hall, definitely a team you need to watch out for, but Wofford has been the more consistent and better team throughout this entire year. So a lot of people are going to pick Seton Hall coming out of the Big East and having that nice end of the season that they did, but I think Wofford going undefeated in conference play, that's going to be a tough task for Seton Hall. So both the, uh, both those teams, win or lose, they're going to have to face Kentucky most likely unless Abilene Christian comes up with Albaline Christian comes up with the biggest upset, most likely one of the bigger upsets in tournament history. Now you go to the bottom left corner in the West region. Final region, we're going to break down Gonzaga, the one seed, as they should be. A lot of people said there is question. a lot of people saying that the questions are, is Gonzaga going to stay on that one line? I thought if they didn't that the committee would make a big mistake. But they didn't. We got some matchups here to look out for. The two match the three matchups I'm mainly looking at Marquette Murray State Marcus Howard versus John Moran and I think that G- the Murray State has that chance to pull off an upset not just because of John Moran but because of their team effort they have more momentum going into the tournament right now all coming off the OVC championship and Marquette they have not played as a team in the end of the season they have not played as an as an entire group that is why Murray State has a big chance to pull off that upset so every 12-5 game in my opinion has a chance to go either way almost like a coin flip 
to who wins that game. Below it, Florida State, Vermont. Florida State, they played so good. But Vermont, I said that if they get the right draw, they can pull off the upset. I don't think this is the right draw to do so. I just think that that is a very intriguing matchup because if Florida State slips up, Vermont is a team that can capitalize off of any tiny mistake that you give them, off of any type of tiny grain of salt that you can give them. They will take it and turn it and s turn it in to a huge run a huge run and that is Florida State they're going to need to play better basketball than they might think also Nevada Florida Nevada the Martin Twins they have played phenomenal all season and is uh, in Florida just a fantastic ACC, SEC tournament able to show that they belong in this tournament and they could be a team that could pull off a couple of wins but Nevada they have just been so good even though you say they lo even though you can say they lost in the semifinals of the Mountain West tournament they did the same thing last year they lost in the quarterfinals of the Mountain West tournament they had a uh, not a consistent end of the season and then they ended up going to the Sweet 16 so I think that this is kind of going to be similar to last year for the Nevada Wolfpack so don't count out don't count all your eggs before they hatch but that's going to wrap it up for the tournament breakdown guys that's going to thank you for watching this video leave your leave your thoughts or the comments about this tournament do you like it or are you unhappy with the draw did your team get in or were they left out Leave your thoughts in the comments below, but that's going to wrap it up for the video. I'll be doing a bracket prediction video tomorrow, and until next time again, thank you for watching the 2019 March Madness Bracket Breakdown.